Okay, scoop it back down here from the ECF. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and walk you through setting up the wick and the coil. Before I begin, I want to touch briefly on uh, what I was talking about the last video, um, or what I forgot to mention was this 1 8 inch uh, PTFE uh, isolation uh, standoff. Um, it's 1 8 inch wide by 1 8 inch long uh, piece that will be in your kit. And basically all you're going to do is you're going to push this into the hole and it's it's a really tight fit. Um, so once you get it all lined up, uh, just take like the end of a pen, uh, not the pointed end, the blunt end, and just push it into place. And it, it will not come out <laughs> once it's pushed into place. So you really don't need to glue uh, that piece into place. Um, I just press fitted mine. Um, been using it for three days now and it hasn't, hasn't gone anywhere. So... Um, all right, let's move on to the wick. Creating the wick, I've got a piece that's 20 millimeters wide by 35 milliliter, millimeters long. Um, I've got a uh, old paper clip that I straightened out. Uh, it's discolored, obviously it's been used quite a few times. Uh, I've got a Bic lighter. I've got my Burns-O-Matic um, butane torch. Gotta love that thing. Uh, I've got a bowl of water to quench in, and I've got my uh, candle. Now, um, I've already boiled this piece, and I just basically got some water, made it like, you know, nice rolling boil hot, uh, like in a microwave, just tossed it in, and then poured the water out, and uh, basically took all the residue off of the stainless steel once you guys receive it. So, uh, here's the roll on the wick. That's pretty much straightforward. Uh, you should just stick the wick or the, the uh, paper clip in to the stainless steel and you just kind of fold it over and then you just start rolling it back and forth until it wraps around the paper clip. And then you just keep rolling it until it wraps all the way around. And then you just roll it nice and tight, about as tight as you can get it. Now the gauge would be uh, to see if it actually fits through the PTFE hole. Uh, if it fits through the hole, then you you pretty much got a good wick, um, ready to temper it or oxidize it, however you want to call it, and then wrap your wire around it. So there is a rolled piece that's ready for oxidizing. So I'm going to test fit it real quick through this hole to make sure that it fits all the way through and it doesn't doesn't bind. So that fits really good, no problems, no binding. So time to heat the sucker up. And this is where my forceps, I use these things for everything from grabbing wire to holding things to get hot. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab our water and get it all set up and pull it into place. And we're going to quench this thing three times. Okay, here we go. Oops. Turn this up just a little. Uh, turning it, oh, I'm turning it down. Oops, wrong way. There we go. And then quench. And once it's quenched, it's again. a total of three times. And quench. Okay, as you can see, it went from a nice silver color to a black color. That is a good thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do um, is soak it with some e-juice and then we're going to light, light it on fire uh, that way it kind of helps put a uh, coating on it kind of like when you use a uh, 
the anatomizer are too long and it fails and you tear it apart and it's got crusties all over it. This is pretty much uh, what we're doing here is kind of introducing uh, the micro layer of crusties. So then we light that on fire. And once it gets going nice and that burn, do it again. We're going to do this for a total of four times. Alright, this is number three. And last one, number four. I've done this uh, on every wick that I do. It uh, doesn't take a whole lot of time, but I haven't had one fail yet. Every, I haven't had one short at all doing it this way. Okay, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap the wire. I usually shoot for um, between 1.5 to 1.9 ohms, somewhere in there. Uh, so, with this, because this is a much smaller diameter wick than what you normally would see, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do six wraps around this. And this should give me about 1.9 ohms. One, two, three, four, five, Should be six wraps around it. Get it all nice and straight. All right, so let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is throw a little bit more juice on this, right where the wick is, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat it up. Kind of like what we did, and we'll just kind of let that burn because it kind of helps sit up the uh, um, the wick or not the wick, the uh, coil itself. Okay, and then what we're going to do is heat and sit, heat and sit, heat and sit, do this a couple times, and basically we're just heating up the uh, the wire and um, the wick itself in that spot and what happens is the wire will expand slightly not a whole bunch but it'll get some of the impurities between that and the mesh and I do that a couple times three four times okay now you notice the wire is kinda nice and black now also it's not the nice silver color so what we're gonna do is then go ahead and insert push it down until everything bottoms out now what I'm going to do is kind of hold it from the top and then I'm going to do the first one is going to be on the negative side. Again this is where the forceps come in handy. I can kind of push it, the wire down in and then wrap it with no problem. And it goes right around that. Tighten. And once that's nice and tight, we're going to do the other side. Same thing, only this time I can just kind of use my fingers. I don't need the forceps. Now, I usually pull this slightly away from, so it kind of angles, lean torpedo kind of angles just a little bit. What that does is when I tighten the wire up, it pulls the slack or um, uh, the, what do you call it, um, well basically out yeah, of the slack 
so it pulls the, the wick towards because it basically wraps the wire around it as you're tightening it. Uh, friction uh, catches up and then just kind of wraps it on around. You know, just like that. Pulls it up nice and straight. Uh, maybe a little bit too much. There. Back that off just a little bit. It's gone too far over to the right. So we're shooting to get the thing nice and straight up or perpendicular up and down. There. That's better. So then what we're going to do is pull our um, I did it backwards, didn't I? Let's see if I can get this out of here without destroying it. No. See, that's where I screwed up. Now I gotta take it all back apart. See, even I make mistakes. I got one side of the uh, uh, paper clip that I had cut with the uh, pair of dikes, and I didn't get it quite cut all the way, so it's kind of mangled. So, since it's mangled, it doesn't want to pull back through my wick. It's got to be a, a very clean piece to actually pull back through. So you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here in a sec. Again, maybe not. See? It's kind of mangled looking, so it won't pull back through the wick. So what i got to do is basically pull this out and flip it around. So the nice smooth side will go all the way down to the bottom. I can hit the hole. There we go. So I slide that all the way back to the bottom. And then we reattach what I just unhooked. Here we go again. There should not be a problem. I'm just going to hold that, grab our forceps, pull our wire back around. I'm do the same thing on the other side. We'll tighten after I get done. Let's tighten on this side. You guys like seeing me mess up, don't you? <laughs> See, I'm human. I admit it. I'm not perfect. Alright, there. Now let's go back around this side. Remember, we're pulling a little bit to the left, so when we tighten, um, it straightens itself up. nice and straight. Now, all we got to do is go ahead and uh, clip the wires. Alright, wires are clipped. Now we're going to check and see what our ohms rating on this is. Grab my probe array. And this time you can go ahead and pull the uh, paper clip out, kind of go from there. there. Now let's go to ohms and see what our ohms rating is. Should be right about 1.9. Yeah, close, 1.8, 1.7, 1 1.8. So we're real close to what I'm, I like. So I can use this pr on pretty much any 3.7 volt mod um, and should be successful. So now the next thing we got to do um, is we can actually do a burn test just to see. Let me see what I'm running out on voltage. Uh, 3.4. That should work just fine. So we're just going to throw some juice on here. Hit power. Doing just fine. No more juice. I'm only running 3.4 volts, so I, mean, I can crank this up a little bit more just to see what she's going to do. Let me run up to, oops, went right past it. 
back around. Okay, let me just wait and then do it five times. <laughs> right, power up. Now we're going to go to 3.7. Now let's see if it gives us an E1 error or an E2 error. No E1, no E2, and that's it. We want it. And you'll see the coil lights up perfectly. That's exactly how it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be completely coil uh, illumination, not no hot spots, so half the coil is not lighting up. I mean, it's exactly the way it's supposed to be working. So, it's looking good. So now all we got to do is hit that center with the wick and basically just slide it right in to place and uh, then you're gonna oops hang on. try that again of course now she doesn't want to go in hang on. Uh, this is a nice little trick you just slide it back in and you're doing the same thing that you did when you were rolling it. Just kind of make it nice and tight. That way it'll fit through the hole. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth. So it's nice and tight. Pull this back out. And let's try it again. Now this time it goes, slides right on through. Now some of you said, uh, why is the wick so long? Well, that's the dimensions I kind of went with. Now, after it's through, I can, you can go ahead and trim it. Basically, all you got to do is cut it at an angle about right there. Okay. It's going to be one of them days. You gotta be kidding me, but dikes suck. I don't have my scissors with me. Hang on, I'll be right back. And scissors. Let's see which direction I'm cutting this one. Eh, nice scissors, these great. So now our wick protrudes from the top just a little bit, not a whole bunch. So you just like that. So now what you gotta do is uh, put the O-ring on in place right around through here and then you're gonna pop the tank on after you fill it up, put the top cap piece on and uh, this is ready to go into service. And that's pretty much all you, you need to do to set up the wick. Uh, if you got any, guys got any questions, uh, just PM me. Um, and other than that, scoot back down and I'm out.